How's it going everybody? Corbin here from Zoco Marketing. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Google Ads conversion tracking. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly how to do it. Um, before I do jump in, I do want to understand why it's important to set up conversion tracking in case you're wondering. So a couple of reasons why you wanna set up conversion tracking in your Google Ads account and why I never recommend anybody run a Google Ads account before you set up conversion tracking is first, um, conversion tracking allows you to understand what campaigns ad groups and keywords are driving leads and or purchases for you. This means basically you're not flying blind, right? You know how to optimize the account, how to get the best results. So something that's very important inside of there. The next is when you, uh, when you set up conversion tracking, this data obviously goes into Google ads and that data gets shared with Google. And what this does is when you're using uh, certain bidding strategies, it allows Google to optimize better for that specific conversion, whether it's a lead or a purchase. And so it's, it's just a way to continue to, to get more efficiency out of your Google ads campaigns when you're sharing that data and uh, informing the Google algorithm, <laughs> the almighty algorithm. Uh, the next thing is, is to just know how much it costs you to get a lead and or purchase. To be honest with you, sometimes Google just isn't a profitable thing for certain people, uh, depending on what you're looking at. And, and if you're not running or you don't have conversion tracking set up, you don't know how much that leader purchase is going to cost you. And so you're basically just throwing money at something that could be uh, wasting money, essentially. So say if you know you when you generate a lead at $50 and you close that lead, it's worth $100 and that's awesome and you're profitable there. But say that that lead is costing you $110 and you didn't know that if because you didn't have conversion tracking set up, then you'd basically be continue to throw money at something that isn't working. So let me show you kind of what this looks like, what conversion tracking looks like um, in an account that's all set up so that you can kind of get an idea on, on how it could be useful. So here we are inside of an account that has um, conversion tracking set up and I'm just gonna move myself over here. I'm gonna move myself over here. And as you can see, we have the campaign set up here. And as we scroll over, you'll notice that we have the amount of conversions that are showing, how much we've spent, the cost per conversion, and our conversion rate. So all this data is very helpful because this tells me, okay, this campaign is getting me a cost per conversion of $1.67. This one's giving me a dollar, uh, a cost per conversion of $2.99. And maybe, you know, that, that campaign $2.99 isn't sustainable for my business. So I need to go through and pause that campaign. Or maybe I need to look into the ad group level or the keyword level to actually go through and um, uh, maybe optimize those different things. So that's why conversion tracking is valuable for your account. Hopefully that was a good little overview in case you didn't understand that. But now we wanna to get to the actual meat and potatoes of the video, and that is how to actually set up your conversion action. So I'm gonna come over here to this brand new kind of demo account that I have. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is after you have your account set up, you're gonna come over to this little thing that says tools and settings. You're gonna click down and come to conversions. And then uh, ignore all this. If this is your first time setting up conversions, you're not gonna see anything inside of here. You're just gonna see a little blue plus, or you're gonna see something that says set up conversion tracking. You wanna hit that, and it's gonna take you to something that looks like this. Now, there are many different conversion actions, and essentially a conversion is essentially whatever you want to define it as. And there are many different ways to achieve the same thing uh, when setting up conversions. The first one is by importing your conversions from Google Analytics or Salesforce or other um, uh, platforms, essentially. Uh, through through phone calls, you can set up specific tracking for phone calls. If you have an app, you can do app installs, in-app purchases, in-app actions. And then uh, for web conversions, you have online sales, link clicks, page views, and signups. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna be going over website visits. If you wanna learn how to import your goals from Google Analytics, I will be creating a video on this shortly, so uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in that. But for here, to keep things simple, we're gonna go straight into how to set up website conversions. So we're gonna click on this. And then the first thing you're going to see is this, it's going to ask you for a specific category. Now, um, try to be descriptive as you can with the category that you have. Obviously, um, the most common ones are going to be either purchase or if you have leads, you're going to have a sign up or a, um, a submit a lead form. Most of the time I go with submit a lead form if I'm setting up a lead gen campaign. So that's what we're going to do for the purpose of this. We're going to hit uh, submit lead gen form. And this doesn't matter a whole ton. This is more just for your purposes and so that you identify with what the conversion action is. So don't worry about this step too much. Next is the conversion value name. So this is where you can assign a specific name for your conversion value. Once again, this is just to help identify, help you identify what the name is. So for me, I'm just going to call this test form and we're gonna scroll down. And the next thing that we have here is the value. Now here's where you can assign a specific value. Say that I know that one lead for my business equals you know, $100, I could put that there. And then now every time that someone fills out the lead form, I will see data in Google Analytics saying that I made $100. But for, for most of the time, I don't recommend adding a conversion value if you're doing leads 
um, because it's, the lead can be very variable on whether the conversion ally gets purchased or actually has value or if the lead closes, whatever it may be. So if, if you're doing a purchase, then this is a good option. But if you just want to um, do leads, typically I do do not assert, assign a conversion action and it says not recommended, but uh, for leads, it's hard to know. The next that we have is the count. For leads, once again, you don't want to count every time somebody goes out and fills out a lead because that can inflate your data. So I usually choose one. If you're doing purchases, you want to keep this on every. The last little bit of settings that we have here, I'm going to move myself again. I don't recommend generally going through and messing with these settings, especially if you're new to Google Ads. If you get into more advanced settings, you can advanced levels, you can start playing with these. But this click through conversion window basically just means if um, uh, it's setting an attribution window and you can adjust this either to you know 90, 30, uh, you know, one week, two weeks, four weeks. But I generally recommend keeping it just at the 30 days there. And then same thing for an engaged view um, window. You can adjust these as well. But once again, just keep it inside of the three days if um, you're not familiar with these kind of settings. And the last thing is you do want to include this in your conversion value, your conversion column. Uh, essentially, when you would not want to include this is if you have a, a what's called a micro conversion action, maybe it's uh, time on site or something that's not as valuable as a conversion, then, and you just want to keep track of it, you can uncheck that box. But most of the time, if you're here on this tutorial, you're going to want to keep that checked as well. Last thing here is we have the attribution model. This could be a whole video uh, tutorial in itself. Um, once again, same as all the other settings, you're probably going to want to keep it at last click. Um, once you start getting more conversions inside of the account, and as I mentioned, getting more of that uh, data inside of there, you're going to want to probably switch to something like data driven. But as you can see, you need to have conversions inside of your account before you can start using that. As you can see, it's grayed out for me and I can't even select it. So we're going to keep that in the last click attribution. And we're going to hit create conversion here. And it's now the conversion action is created, but the but uh, it's it, we're not done yet. Now we need to actually go through and set up our tag and add code to our website so that Google knows when these events are fired. And as you can see, there's three different options you can do here. The first one is to use Google Tag Manager. If you're not familiar with Google Tag Manager, don't worry about it. I would just skip this part. The next thing you can do is if you have a developer, you can simply just email your developer these instructions and then they will take care of it if you have that luxury and you don't want to worry about it at all. But you were here on this tutorial, so I want to teach you uh, exactly how to install the tag yourself. Trust me, it's not that hard of a process. Essentially, all it is is copying and pasting um, the actual tag. There are two different tags that we're going to have to install. The first one is the global site tag. And the next one is the event snippet. This global site tag needs to actually fire on every page of your website. So what we need to do is come over here. We're going to grab this. We're going to copy it. And um, the actual implementation will vary slightly based on whatever web platform you are or website builder you are using. For me, I am using WordPress. So we're going to go over to a WordPress site. Okay. And as far as the conversion action that we are, we are setting up for today is as you can see here, I have this test form on my website. Essentially, I just want to track anytime somebody comes into this, uh, onto this page and fills out this form so that I know if I'm sending traffic to it, that it's successful and I'm generating leads. So we're going to come over here and we're on the back end of WordPress. And if you are using WordPress, what you're going to want to do is come over here to plugins and you're going to want to add a new plugin wait for that to load up. And then you're going to come over here to this search bar and my head is always in the way. And you're going to search for HF, um, uh, CM. I don't know why that just moved me down like that. Wait for that to load. And then this is the one that you're looking for. So header and footer code uh, manager, we're going to install this. Wait for that to load real quick. And we are so close to being done and you'll see just how easy this is. And we're gonna activate this. And as I mentioned, if you are on a different website builder, then this may look slightly different, but essentially the steps are the exact same. You just take the global site tag and you want to add it to every page of your website. So we're gonna scroll here to find this. Okay, so here we are, and, and, and now we have the headers and footers code manager. We're going to come here to settings, click on that, and then you'll see just how easy it is to add this code here. So we're going to wait for just a second. We're going to come up here, and you'll see now that we have this option to add snippet. It's going to load up snippet name. So I'm going to call this the global site tag. Global site tag. We want this to be HTML, and then we do want this on every um, page on our site. So we're just going to do site wide. And then uh, we don't want to exclude any pages for this specific one. And then we're going to come over here and then we're just going to copy that code. Then hit, simply hit save. And there is the first code. So now we have the global site tag installed on our website. So if we come back over here to our Google ads account, 
that one is done. So now what we need to do is come down here to the actual event snippet and we need to install the event snippet. And this is going to be on the page load. We're gonna grab this guy and we're going to then um, come back over to our Google, or sorry, to WordPress. Okay, so be sure, I just started going through and I started filling out the, the snippet on this same one. You don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is uh, make sure you're not overriding your global site tag. You wanna add a new snippet here. So we're gonna add a new snippet. That is gonna open up a new blank document here for us. The snippet name, we're gonna call this Google, um, Google Ads Leads Tag. That way we know exactly what it is. Um, you could name this purchase or conversion or whatever it may be. And for the site display, we actually want this to fire on a specific page. And for me, I want this to fire on my thank you page. So this, for you, this is gonna be whatever page someone sees after they filled out the form or whatever they see after they've done a purchase. Maybe it's a confirmation page, whatever it may be. Obviously, this is just a page that people will only land on if they filled out the form or didn't, uh, gone through and done a purchase. So once we have that page identified, we're then going to go over here to the code snippet. We're going to uh, make sure we have the right one here. Just gonna copy that. And then we're gonna go back over, double check, fire that there. And then we're going to hit save. And then that is everything we needed to add the code. I promised it's, it's not that difficult. It's mostly just copying and pasting. So now that we have the code installed, now it's time to go through and check and make sure everything is firing correctly. So what you're gonna wanna do is go over to Google and you're gonna wanna type in uh, Google Tag Assistant. Tag Assistant. And then once you get to Google Tag Assistant, you're going to want to um, add this, this uh, Tag Assistant to Chrome. As you can see, our, I already have it inside of here, but we're gonna scroll back over the, to our website. Oh, actually, I guess I should save our, our code first. So before you do that, before you get the, um, the, uh, the Tag Manager, we're gonna hit Next, and then we're gonna hit Done. So now the tag is installed, everything is firing, but I wanna show you how to verify that it is correctly installed. So as you see here, we have our test form. It is currently unverified. You won't see a verification until a conversion actually fires from the Google Ads inside of there. And then once that happens, you'll see, you know, you'll have a conversion action and it is included in the conversion window. And now how to check that going back to getting Google Tag Manager. Um, you Once you have Google Tag Manager installed, you're gonna come to your website. So here is the test form that I have. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to click on this. Actually, I'm gonna refresh this real quick. So you can see exactly what this looks like. Um, and once once we're inside of Google Tag Manager, you'll notice that inside of here, I have a lot of different tags because I've I've done I've, this is kind of my demo one. But you'll see that you'll you'll see that you have a global site tag firing, which is a good sign. And then you also see that you have your Google remarketing tag. So that means that everything is firing correctly. And if for whatever reason this is like yellow or blue, I mean yellow or red, then that means you have a problem. But if it's blue or green, that means you're doing all right. So. We now have confirmed that the global site tag is firing on our website here, but we want to make sure that the form actually um, uh, fired. So now I just, I'm going to go through and fill out a test form like this. So Corbin, my name, and then the email, we're going to go through here. And then you'll notice here in, in the this, this Google Tag Manager, we'll come through and look to see if we have our um, conversion tag firing. And there it is. So we have our Google Ads conversion tracking um, currently firing, which means, hooray, we have done it. We have set up our Google tracking and uh, everything is all set up. So now when somebody comes in from a Google Ads campaign, goes to your form and fills it out, that data will be passed back into Google Ads so you know when it was, when it was successful and how much it cost you to get that lead form. Uh, if you found value in the video today, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video and ping that notification bell if you want more videos just like these when they come out and we'll see you in the next one.